The fact that under no circumstances a body can travel faster than the speed of light leads us to the conclusion that its resistance against the acceleration, that is, its mass, should infinitely increase as its speed approach the speed of light. A mathematical analysis leads to the formula of this dependence. If m sub zero is the mass at very low speeds, the mass m at the speed v will be the following. Thus the resistance against the acceleration tends to infinite when v approaches c. But since the speed of light is 300,000 km per second, its relativistic effects are almost impossible to appreciate in ordinary life. Oh, I'm dreaming again. But everything looks quite normal here. see, it's all about the contraction of moving bodies, as the professor explained. In this dream, there is a speed limit which can't be reached. That's why the policeman on the corner looks so lazy. He need not watch for speeders. Well, this is a dream, and this bike seems to be here just for me. I think nobody will care if I take it. Let's see if I can catch up with her. Great! I see the trick now. This is where the word of relativity comes in. Everything that moves relative to me looks shorter to me. Everything but me. What a pity. I wish I could see myself as thin as a noodle. It is impossible to exceed the speed limit in this dream. As when the old professor said it was impossible to surpass the speed of light. But though I can't overtake her, at least it seems as I was getting nearer. Now it seems as we were not moving relative to each other. That's why I see her normal. Hello? Don't you find it strange to live in a city with such a slow speed limit? Speed limit? We don't have any speed limit here. I can get anywhere as fast as I wish. Or at least I could if I had a motorcycle instead of this nothing to be done with all bike. But you were moving very slowly when you passed me a moment ago. I noticed you particularly. Oh, you did, did you? I suppose you haven't noticed that since you first talked to me, we have passed five blocks. Isn't that fast enough for you? But the streets became so short. <laughs> What difference does it make anyway, whether we move faster or whether the street becomes shorter? If I step harder on the pedals, the blocks become shorter and I get there quicker, don't you think? You see, here we are! Well, as you wish, but look at the clock. It took us half an hour to go with these ten blocks. When I saw you first, it was exactly noon. And did you notice this half hour? It seemed only five minutes to me. Oh, that clock is too fast, no doubt. Oh, your watch is too slow because you have been going too fast. What's the matter with you anyway? Did you fall down from the moon? Well, let's wait for some minutes to check if the watch loses. Perfect. Hello, my dear granddaughter. I'm home again. Granny, my dear granny, did you bring me any present? Oh, be patient, be patient, my dear. Is anything wrong, young man? Yes, uh, no. Excuse me, I know it's not my business, but may I ask you, are you really the grandfather of this nice old lady? You see, I'm a stranger here and I never... Oh, I see. Because of my work, I travel quite a lot and as I spend most of my life in the bars, I naturally grow old much more slowly than my relatives living in the city. I am so glad that I came back in time to see my dear little granddaughter still alive. But excuse me, please. I have to attend to her in the taxi. Yes, of course. If I were a relative, the traveler would appear to his relatives as a very old man. And they would appear very old to him. Although both sides might in fact be fairly young. But what I'm saying now is definitely nonsense. One could not have relative whiskers. Excuse me, sir, will you be so kind and tell me who is responsible for the fact that the passengers in the bus grow out so much more slowly than the people staying at one place? I am responsible for it. Oh, so you have solved the problem of the Philosopher's Stone of the ancient alchemists. You must be quite a famous man in the medical world and a very rich person. Oh, no, I am just a foreman of this bus station. The station foreman? You mean the station master? You mean you just say when the buses must leave? Yeah, that's all I do. And every time the bus gets started, the people in town gain in their ages relative to the passengers. 
But what's that have to do with staying young? You see, I don't really know what happens, but it is so. I asked a university professor who travels in one of the buses about it once, but only got a bunch of incomprehensible talk, including something about the red shifts of the sun or something like that. Have you ever heard about those red shifts? No. Neither have I. Well, gentlemen, I'm afraid I must go. And thus penetrating the domains of the pure theory of relativity. Thank you very much for your attention and see you next time. I think it's high time you laid the table, little boy. Uh, yes, ma'am, I'm coming. Didn't you hear me, Tom? Mommy, what time is it?